The name Dennis Rodman, also known as the Worm, easily evokes memories of an almost rebellious streak. A player with several tattoos, piercings, and enough controversies to fill a history textbook. But underneath all that, he was a player with extraordinary determination, grittiness, defense, and willingness to sacrifice himself for the good of his team. His crazy dedication to making any team he was on the best team ever made him a top-tier player. He is one of the best defenders ever to grace the NBA court. But just how crazy good was Dennis Rodman? Let's find out. Let's start with Dennis Rodman's crazy stats throughout his 14-season career that saw him play for the Pistons, Spurs, Bulls, Lakers, and Mavericks. Between 1990 and 2000, Rodman never averaged fewer than 11.2 rebounds per game. His entire career stats are no less impressive, with 13.1 rebounds per game. He even managed to hand out 1.8 assists per game and shot the ball with a good 52.1% accuracy. Rodman was the competition when he played. He shares an NBA Finals record with 11 offensive rebounds in a single game with himself, having scored that twice during the 1996 Finals as a member of the Bulls. Although his offensive game was practically non-existent, he finished his career with a single game high of 34 rebounds. He is arguably the best rebounding forward in NBA history. Fierce Defensive Prowess Dennis Rodman won the Defensive Player of the Year award twice during his time with the NBA. Both times were mind-blowing. In the 1989-90 season, his first Defensive Player of the Year win, the NBA recognized Rodman for his defense and rebounding skills, which were unparalleled in the league. His next Defensive Player of the Year win was no less spectacular. In the 1990-91 season, Rodman played such strong defense that the NBA stated he could shut down any opposing player, from point guard to center. Although in the early years of his career, he used to come off the bench, it was that season he finally started in 77 of the 82 regular season games, averaging 8.2 points and 12.5 rebounds, all of which earned him his second Defensive Player of the Year award. The only thing close to how badass a defensive player Rodman was is perhaps his rebounding skills. He was so good that he won seven rebounding titles consecutively. He was undoubtedly the rebound king of the 90s, an era many described as the era of the big men. So Rodman was achieving his rebounding feats in a vacuum. He was doing it while going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hall of Famers like Karl Malone, David Robinson, Shaquille O'Neal, Hakeem Olajuwon, Patrick Ewing, Dikembe Mutombo, and Charles Barkley. While Rodman reigned as the rebound king, he averaged 14.9 rebounds per game in his worst year. In his best year, he grossed a spectacular 18.7 rebounds per game. It was unheard of in the modern era of basketball. If you don't understand how crazy that is, check this out. Dwight Superman Howard, who at 6 foot 11 inches was one of the most dominant, athletic, and physically gifted players in the league today, if not ever, won the NBA 2008-2009 rebounding title with an average of 13.8 rebounds per game. Rodman was 6 foot 7 inches. Will Chamberlain is the only player in NBA history with more rebounding titles than Rodman. The first peculiar fact about the Worm is that he is the only player to reach the NBA after being drafted out of Southeastern Oklahoma State University by the Pistons in 1986. Whenever a team was acquiring Rodman, it was solely for his defensive ability because he was almost a liability offensively with multiple zero-point games. Yet his defense skills kept him on the court when many other players would have become irrelevant. The Worm has the most 20-plus rebound games in NBA history by a comfortable margin, an unbelievable 158 games with 20-plus rebounds. The closest competition comes from Andre Drummond, 
who has 88 20-plus rebound games. Dwight Howard comes third with 82 games like this. Over the last 30 NBA seasons, there have been 13 games with 30-plus rebounds. The Worm has five, and nobody else has more than two. Rodman led the NBA in rebounds per game for seven consecutive seasons, from the 1991-92 to 92 season throughout the 1997-98 to 98 season. Nobody has a streak of leading the league for more than five seasons. At the peak of his leading streak, he averaged 16.7 rebounds per game. No player has had 16.7 rebounds per game in a single season since Rodman in 1994-95. To date, Rodman is one of two players in NBA history with over 5,000 or more career rebounds than points scored. Rodman had 11,954 rebounds and 6,683 points, giving him a 5,271 margin between rebounds and points scored. The only player to achieve this is Bill Russell, with 21,620 rebounds and 14,522 points. At 34, Rodman had one career triple-double in 1996 for the Bulls. That made him the second oldest player in Bulls history to record a triple-double. The only Bulls player to do that at an older age is Paul Gasol at 35. Rodman always went the extra mile for his team. He was a player you could depend on when the team needed an extra boost. There are several examples of Rodman going hard to put his team on top, but some stand out the most. One of them is when he was credited with gifting David Robinson his only scoring title. Michael Jordan won the scoring title for the previous seven years in a row, but he was not going to be in the race for the 1993-94 season. It was time for another scoring king to be crowned. Rodman had just been traded to the San Antonio Spurs, and he came with a certain thirst. As a star shooter on the team, Robinson had the chance to win that season's scoring title. Rodman told Robinson not to worry about rebounding, but instead to focus on scoring, and score he did. That season, Robinson averaged 10.7 rebounds per game and a whopping 29.8 points per game, while the Worm shouldered the remaining rebounding load for both of them, averaging an astounding 17.3 rebounds per game. Another time Rodman displayed his team spirit was in the Chicago Bulls' historic 72-10 season. This time, Michael Jordan was back from retirement, and for his first full season, he joined forces with Scottie Pippen and a newcomer to the team, none other than Dennis Rodman. The trio embarked on a legendary record-breaking season, posting a regular season 72-10 win-loss record. Rodman's presence on the team gave the Chicago Bulls the best rebounder in the NBA. When you factor in Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen, a third all-NBA defender, the Chicago Bulls were transformed into a virtually unbeatable team. Dennis Rodman is the embodiment of a team player. He never demanded the ball or hogged the front lines. He came to the court with one aim to know his role and perform it to absolute historical perfection. Sure, he had some rather strange things around him, but the Worm is undeniably the best role player of all time. Offense was not Rodman's strongest point, but that didn't stop him from bringing his best offensive ability to the court. His highest scoring game was in 1991 against the Denver Nuggets. That night, he dropped 34 points, and yet, his impact was best felt on the glass as he pulled down a whopping 23 rebounds. The fact that Rodman was having a career-high scoring game that night didn't stop him from bringing the same energy to rebounding, and that is why many of his scoring opportunities were created from well-timed offensive rebounds. Rodman was a rebound specialist. He had incredible rebounding nights against almost every NBA team. Today, the game has evolved to a point where players need incredible versatility to remain relevant. It means we may never see a legendary rebounder like the Worm again. They say defense wins championships, and if there ever was a player who played excellent defense, he is Dennis Rodman.
the Worm won five championships with his aggressive defensive play. In 2011, the Pistons retired Rodman's number 10 jersey, and later that year, he was inducted into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. In October 2021, Rodman was named to the NBA 75th Anniversary Team, an honor befitting one of the league's greatest players. How many rebounds do you think Rodman can pull down if he played in today's game? Let us know in the comments below!